What's going on, guys? It is my favorite time of the year. It is playoff scenario time. So let's get straight into it from the North America playoff scenarios. I thought, honestly, that this season we might not have many coming down to the wire, except for probably top two because of how G2 was playing. They played a lot of games towards the end of the season versus the good teams. Uh, but we got a lot to play for. So we're going to go over this through the playoff scenario calculator by Nathan Allen, which we'll link in, in the description below that you guys can use as well if you want to look at certain scenarios. We're not going to do every single scenario because a lot of these are game differential stuff. But some key notes here. Oops, I just clicked the windows button. We don't want that. Is that... Um, the way tiebreakers work in the ROCS is, like, if you have the same amount of match wins, which is obviously the first one, uh, then it goes to game differential. It does not go to head-to-head -head first. Keep that in mind because that changes things. It's basically more about your entire body of work rather than just versus the one team that you're tied with. So... We do game differential. If that is tied, it then goes to head-to-head. -head. If there's a three-way tie, it goes to a three-way head-to-head where it comes down to game differential between those three tied teams. That shouldn't really play a factor here all that much. Uh, that could have played a factor earlier, um, but I think for the most part, we got rid of most of that, except for, I think, E United maybe for a seventh spot. But I can talk too much about that. But here's what we know and what we're going to talk about. The most important things are making the regional championships, making top two, so you automatically get a spot into the semifinals. There's also some scenarios where if you're third and fourth, you get two chances to make it to the semifinals. If you're fifth and sixth, you need to win twice uh, to make it to the semifinals. So those are the big things playing for. Number seven, you clinch a spot for RLCS Season 10, so that's pretty important. I'm not going to talk about it too much here, um, except for E United's purposes, I think, which I don't even know if I really brought them up here, but... And then, obviously, 8th and ninth, you go to the promotion relegation tournament. And 10th, finally, you go down to the rival series automatically. So, that one's pretty important. So, a lot of different stages here. Like As you can see with the purple, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different ones out of the 10 teams. So, we're not going to hit on every single one of these scenarios, but we'll get into it. Note number 2. I'm doing this right after the show. I also help Psyonix make the schedule for the final week. I have not decided on exactly what order those will be in yet. It doesn't necessarily all fall onto me. The, uh, Psyonix uh, can make that call too. But for the hype factor slash you don't want teams clinching if they're not playing generally, um, we try and order the matches as fair as possible. So keep that in mind. And um, if you have any ideas, throw them in the YouTube comments because I'm going to be probably digging into that on Monday to figure that out. But if you guys get a head start on me, that'd be fantastic. And then I'll look at them and figure out which one, you know, how I like it. Um, but let's get into it. We'll start off with the bottom and work our way to the top. So let's go back over here. Flight versus Rogue. This one's pretty simple. They play next week. Winner goes to promotion. Loser goes to rivals. And I'll show you why that is. So if you look down here, Rogue and Flight. I wish uh, this would just go out a little bit further. Would be nice. Both have a 50-50 shot at going 10th, which means it's just a heads-up matchup, win or lose. That's how it goes. They uh, Both teams cannot exit the 8th or ninth spot. 8th or ninth spot really doesn't matter. Like, it gives you an easier game in the first round for the promotion format if you are in eighth. But at the end of the day, you have to beat two teams anyway. So it's not the biggest deal in my mind. Um, so the reason why uh, th uh, this is is because, as you can see down here, Rogue is at minus 12 game differential. Flight is at minus 13. If Flight wins no matter what, uh, even if it goes to five games, which we'll show right here, then they have a minus 12. And Rogue has a minus 13, so Flight would pass them. Say they tied somehow, Flight would hold the head-to-head -head because they beat them. That's the only way Flight can catch them. Rogue, obviously, um, if they win, that they go to three wins. And they're more likely to get that eighth spot. Uh, so that's pretty much what these guys are playing for. You either go directly down to the Rival Series or you go to the promotion tournament and you get two extra lives because you have to lose twice there. Um, so very important game there. We'll probably open the day with that game, I would assume. Uh, but it depends on what other games are going on. Uh, but that game super, super important. Uh, probably, like, honestly, the most important. Outside of maybe Pittsburgh Knights Cloud 9. Because they're playing for literally their RLCS lives. Which is, at the end of the day, probably the, the most important thing. Um, next up, we go to E United for 7th place. They have the 3-1 or 3-0 Space Station. And they need Cloud 9 to beat Pittsburgh Knights, plus they need some game differential help. So it depends on their win there. And we'll show that right now. So obviously, E, uh, e United has a, re a really tough matchup, but say they 3-0, right? Then we go into this Cloud9 Pittsburgh Knights matchup and say it's a 3-2. I think Pittsburgh Knights would still get the spot. But once we go down, uh, as you can see here, minus 4 and minus 4. Pittsburgh Knights beat E United, so that's why they would get the head-to-head. -head. 
They beat them this week. Um, if it's a 3-1, that drops Pittsburgh Knights down to a minus 5 compared to a minus 4. So, again, if they tied, that would be a problem. But that's the only way E United can catch up is they have to win. Pittsburgh Knights has to lose because they can't catch Ghost uh, or Cloud9 at this point because they have four wins. That's how E United survives for RLCS Season 10 and doesn't go to the promotion tournament. For Pittsburgh Knights... Well, that Cloud9 match is going to mean a whole lot more than just going to the promotion tournament. That is one way to look at it. But for them, for top six, they control their own destiny. Uh, this also includes Cloud9, obviously. But if they 3-1 or 3-0 Cloud9, they clinch a spot because their game differential will flip past Cloud9s. If they 3-2 Cloud9, they can't catch Cloud9, but they can catch Ghost. Ghost would have to lose 3-1 to energy or worse, which is doable. It's not necessarily not going to happen. Uh, so we'll show that one real quick. So right here, say it's a 3-1 for Pittsburgh Knights. Pittsburgh Knights would be at a minus 1. Cloud9 would also be at a minus 1. Now, the good thing for Pittsburgh Knights, even if Ghost turned this into a three-way tie, which sometimes when that happens, it would hurt teams like Pittsburgh Knights. Pittsburgh Knights, they also beat Ghost, so they would win that as well. So say this was a 3-2. We'd have three teams exactly the same record, four and five. Pittsburgh Knights would come in fifth because they beat both Ghost and Cloud9. So they don't have to worry about that. Sometimes it does flip because if, say, Pittsburgh Knights only beat Cloud9 3-2, but Ghost won like 3-1, but Cloud9 like swept Ghost, then Pittsburgh Knights would come in last or whatever that is. So it uh, that doesn't matter here. Uh, Pittsburgh Knights, no matter what, will get that. Now, if this is a 3-2, this is where things change. Where now Pittsburgh Knights could still fall into that uh, spot where they only qualify for ROCS Season 10. Now, if they win, then they get that, which is nice, but they don't go to the regional championships. For that, they would need Ghost to lose 3-1. Because, again, then they would tie Ghost Gaming for the game differential. They own the head-to-head, -head, which is a good thing for Pittsburgh Knights. And they can make it through. So, realistically, it seems like they have pretty good odds as long as they beat Cloud9. So, that's what they have to do. Pretty big shoes to fill. They cannot go to the top four. I believe top four is already locked up at this point. Uh, let me check that real quick because I kind of forgot. Cloud9 might be able to sneak in, actually, because G2. Um, but that's it. Yeah, I think Cloud9 can sneak in and Ghost can also sneak in if G2 goes 0-2. So if they want a spot for where they have two lives to go to the top four, then Cloud9 G and Ghost would have to win and hope G2 loses both and they would need game differential help. But it is possible. Uh, so keep that in mind. Moving on. Sorry if this is a little confusing. If I'm going a little too fast, I just, you know, here's how it is. And these are a little bit rough because, again, I was just working to broadcast. I'm just trying to get this out as soon as possible for the teams, players, and fans so they all know. Cloud9 to make top six. They just need to beat a Pittsburgh Knights or lose 3-2. So they just need to win two games versus Pittsburgh Knights, and they are in because Pittsburgh Knights cannot pass them. Ghost could still pass them, but Pittsburgh Knights cannot or um, if Ghost lose, plus some game differential help. So even if they lose, they still have a chance to make it. So say Pittsburgh Knights win 3-2. If Ghost gets swept by energy, Ghost is out, Cloud9 is in. I believe even if it's a 3-2, no matter how Ghost loses, Cloud9 is still in. I'm sorry, uh, we already knew that. So 3-1, I'm sorry. Uh, that's what I'm looking at. So uh, if they lose 3-1, no matter how bad Ghost game and loses, a 3-2, Cloud9 is still in because of this three-way tiebreaker. Uh, Cloud9 took down Ghost Cayman. So, 3-1, they're fine. If it's a 3-0, then they need Ghost to lose a little bit worse. Now, Ghost moves ahead into that sixth spot, so that's where things could get hairy. Likely, I would assume we would put Pittsburgh Knights Cloud9 last, so they'll kind of know what they need to play for. But, at the same time, we might not because we don't want like Cloud9 and Pittsburgh Knights both to make it in. Because of Ghost Gaming. So we'll have to figure out how I'm going to work that. I just haven't really thought about the schedule just yet. Uh, so that is Cloud9's sake. G2. G2 is the most confusing. They can obviously fall down the fifth if they go 0-2 and need you know, some game differential uh, things to backfire on them. But they also have the most play for where they're playing two of the other top two teams. So if they go 2-0, they clinch top two. They would need major help uh, if they go 1-1. One and one. And the reason why I'm not going to write out all of these is because, honestly, there's a lot of different game differential stuff for them because they play two of the teams that are ahead of them. So, say they lose to Space Station, they can catch Space Station, but then they beat Sonics, they can catch Sonics. Maybe they don't catch Energy. It depends if Energy wins or not, yada, yada, yada. So, there's a lot of different things uh, at stake for G2. But if they win both, no matter the scores, even if they're 3-2, we'll show it here. 
they would be number one or number two, depending on what space station does. Their game differential right now, let me check what that is. I think it's not great now. It's like decent, but it's not amazing. They're at five and two. They are slightly better than the Sonics. Actually, their game differential is about even with space station and Sonics. It's very, very close. It really comes down to the matchups at hand. Uh, so G2, I'm not going to write out all these scenarios at most like G2 fans. Like, uh, if you go two and oh, you are very likely number one or number two, very likely number two, unless you like sweep space station. Uh, but if you lose one, it's going to be a difficult road. If you lose it to space station, you're in a better spot, <clears throat> but the problem is energy they would have to lose to Ghost Game, and then you would need some game differential help there. But Energy, their game differential is horrid. So that is a good sign for you. Uh, moving on. Energy. Now, Energy, who we just talked about, uh, their game differential is terrible. They're 6-2. and two. They have one win better than G2. G2 has a plus two game differential on them. It's really bad right now. They're losing three games to the Sonics. They're losing roughly three games to Space Station as well, on average. Uh, so Energy is in a really bad spot. They basically need to win and then need some help. Uh, so as we see here, they need to win and they need Sonics to lose to G2 and G2 goes 1-1 one and one, or G2 goes 2-0 and oh and Space Station goes 0-2. Oh There's a couple other things in there, game differential, yada yada. But for the most part, that's what they need because they're not going to win uh, game differential stuff. Actually, yeah, I think they can't win any game differential stuff. That's why they're at 25%. What that basically means for a top two spot is one, they need to win and that's a 50-50 odd right there then they need some help and they need a decent amount of help they need um so that oh that's 50 50 percent but then you need so for 25 percent more i think you need two other things to go your way um so or i guess one other thing to go your way but it depends on what it is so it's a little bit difficult for energy to make it because again they're going to lose all the tiebreakers so say they go seven and two you need the sonics to drop out very likely they could catch them in game differential but uh, or actually they can't, um, if Sonics wins, same thing with space station, uh, like if space station goes one and one, they can't catch space station either. Uh, so it's going to be, um, a difficult road for energy. They need to win and need a lot of help. <coughs> Excuse me. So that series may be more on the line for ghost than energy necessarily. But if energy wants one of those top four spots, then never mind. They're already clinched top four. So you don't have to worry about that. So energy, honestly, Sure, they want a shot at top two. They're very likely going to be finishing three or four. So I'm trying to do this like off the cuff uh, with you guys. So just keep that in mind if we're getting a little confused here. Sonics for top two. If they win, they're in. They only have one game. They play G2. So if they win, they get it. They knock G2 out. Energy can't catch them. Everything is great. If they lose, then they need differential help with Space Station going 0 2 or G2 going 1 and 1. So right here, say G2 wins. If it's a 3 0 then they almost have no chance. They have a 4% chance. But if it's a 3-2, watch how this skyrockets. Up to a 27% chance because it'll be harder for G2 to catch the Sonics in game differential. Or nearly impossible. So then if G2 loses here to Space Station 3-1, then um, Energy, uh, even if they win, 3-1 uh, we'll say. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Energy would have to lose here too. So I didn't write that one in there, but energy would have to lose to obviously tie with the Sonics as well. Uh, but again, if they lose basically in any way for energy, it doesn't matter for G2. It matters a little bit depending on the first game. Um, so they would need some help there from Space Station. If Space Station goes 0-2, so say G2 wins this instead, then they're going to need some help here where now they got a 50-50 shot. They need E United to take down Space Station. Um, which it could be any result if that is a 3-1. Obviously, that changes with game differential stuff. So they would need a lot of help. So at the end of the day, um, if you're a Sonics fan, you got to be G2 generally to make it in because you go from 100% chance to make it in um, if you win to at best a 25% chance-ish. So keep that in mind for you Sonic fans out there. The last one, Space Station. They have two games and they only have to win one match. One of those matches versus E United, who has basically nothing to play for. They're playing for a seventh spot, realistically, but there's not a ton. Uh, so it's a relatively easy match, I believe, for Space Station. They could clinch before they even play G, uh, G2. So, um, and if they beat G2, they also get in. So they have two chances there. Or they lose both, and they still have a chance. So we'll go back here, and we'll look at that. Uh, so we'll just clear everything else out. 
So you can see some percentages here. So Space Station, if they lose both, say they lose both 3-2 for now. And we'll just see what their odds are. Uh, so Space Station, they still have a 50-50 shot at making it in at this point. They'll be 6-3. and three. G2 and Sonics plays, so that'll knock one of them out because of these 3-2s. Because uh, they won't have the game differential. So that knocks one of them out automatically. So they don't even have to worry about that game whatsoever. It comes down to does energy win or lose versus Ghost Gaming. It gets a little hairier if these are more like 3-1s. They drop down all the way to an 8% chance. Because again, then they need some exact scoring versus G2 and Zonix. They would need a sweep one way or the other to knock one below them. So keep that in mind there. If it's 3-0s... I, I think they still have a small chance. No, they don't. Okay, so it, uh, say it's a 3-1 and a 3-0, they have no chance. If it's the opposite, I think they might have a very, very minor chance. Nope, they still don't. So they need to at least win two individual games on the day. The games versus G2 are more important. They will get more percentage chance. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, if they win one, they're in. But if they lose both in five, they still have a very, very good shot. Uh, so keep that in mind. So look at that. One game difference goes from a 33% chance to a 50% chance. And this is why we talk about every single game matters. We say it all the time. No one ever believes us, but it really, really does. So uh, keep that in mind for Space Station fans. And that is it for our playoff scenarios. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I tried to go as fast as possible. So you can tell I was speaking a mile a minute, but I think we got the general gist. So uh, we'll have some cleaned up scenarios on the desk for the final week uh, where I will write them out more cleanly. So if you guys want to just follow along there, feel free. Uh, but until then, we'll see you for your play scenarios tomorrow. Bye.